Let's first hear from an IDSA member who's practicing telestewardship in Northern California. Infectious diseases is incredibly well suited for telemedicine and telehealth. So we work with some critical access hospitals where we do stewardship rounds three times a week, where we're meeting with the, um, the pharmacist and we're looking at the anti-infectives that are being uh, prescribed. We have full privileges at that hospital. So there's no difference from a compliance or a credentialing standpoint um, versus us being there physically. The only difference is we're using telemedicine as a tool. Yes, I am, doctor. I'm just actually demonstrating our telemedicine platform for one of our colleagues. Oh, telemedicine so. platform. I love the platform. Now, obviously, when we're working at a hospital, we are credentialed to that hospital. We are 100% on staff at that hospital. Well, we started using telemedicine, gosh, I'd say at least seven years ago for a variety of services. And it really does benefit not only us, but our patients. It allows our patients to stay in their community, near their friends and family, not have to shift facilities. And I think also definitely uh, uh, streamlined and, and improved the relationship between pharmacy and the hospitalist. Got and, pharmacy uh, more involved. Absolutely got yeah. pharmacy more involved. So. But this way now there's this dialogue that between three parties, the, you know, the ID, pharmacy, and the docs. Let's do it this way, and these are the reasons. Great, that makes sense. And As you see how telestewardship can work, there are some basic technology requirements that apply. These relate to broadband internet connectivity and IT security requirements to ensure HIPAA compliance. Next stop, University Street Station. Okay, good morning, good afternoon for those of you farther away. Uh, welcome to the August 16th Tele and Microbial Stewardship Session. Uh, we're gonna start off just quickly going around. Any new announcements or questions before we move into our didactic session? When the long-term care facilities, what they need is both from the regulatory perspective stewardship, right, and they obviously have a lot of opportunities there, which are different than the critical access hospitals, community yeah. hospitals, but they, at the same time, they need infectious disease consultation and expertise, mm -hmm. and so they need that, like, how do I deal with this case, as well as how do I develop yeah, this program. program. Yeah, I think that hospital administrators have a crucial role to play in good stewardship, and they know that. They have to make tough choices every day, and here we are providing a service, but it is a service for a fee. What's going to be their, the return on their investment if they choose to go with us? And I think it's essential that those people understand that we provide a variety of different values to them. One is regulatory. So we know that bodies such as Joint Commission and other uh, accrediting bodies are really focused on this because good stewardship is good for patients. So we know that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, has proposed through the Federal Register that all acute care hospitals uh, as well as all subacute and rehab facilities uh, will soon need to implement some form of stewardship program in order to participate in the Medicare process. In the field of infectious disease, we've always known that this is an important topic. Now that we have national attention into this matter, we're going to have hospitals and uh, across the country who are needing to develop a either enforce their program they already have or develop one. And I think it's definitely a wave of the future. You know, I really see the benefit. You know, we have a lot of data showing decreased costs. Our um, Clostridium difficile infection rates have come down. Um, and those things really are attributed to strong antimicrobial stewardship. So I would say if you don't have an infectious disease person available to you readily, uh, telemedicine is fantastic because this is, you can have the quality infectious disease of a big academic medical center right there in your rural community. IDSA members should access the IDSA policy statement and other telehealth resources on our website 